I never grew up with the PlayStation 1. I never spent a lot of time using one, and even to this day, from a retro gaming point of view, there's just not a lot of things on it that grab my attention. But uh, the, uh, the PlayStation 1 hardware had some unique things about it that gave games on it a very distinctive look, and uh, once in a while someone will ask about how you can emulate that uh, PS1-like visual style in Game Maker, so today we're going to be diving into that a little bit. So uh, this is... I'm not going to be going too deep into creating like a PS1 aesthetic emulation shader. I'm just going to be hitting some of the more obvious effects. And we're going to start with the classic vertex jitter. The classic vertex jitter look that PlayStation 1 games have. Uh, so what you saw on the screen uh, just then is not the, uh, not the starting project that I'm going to be starting with here. Uh, right now I have pretty much the same project as I had um, sort of been continually evolving with this, uh, this 3D and Game Maker series. Uh, the only difference is being that I added these two, these block objects, uh, because I'm going to be talking about some uh, PS1 texture mapping artifacts, and I've also just deleted some code that's, uh, that's not going to be relevant to us and that I don't want to be, uh, be distracting in this project. Before we get started, I'm going to be talking about the world view and projection matrices again in the vertex shader. I've explained those ad nauseum in videos in the past. If you want to implement an effect like this yourself, you probably want to already know how a vertex position is transformed in the vertex shader. Other than that, basic 3D knowledge, always a nice thing to have. I say this in pretty much every video. Let's get started. So let's start with the vertex shader. Uh, so to make a long story short, the PlayStation 1's graphics hardware, I don't know if you could call it a video card at that point in time, but um, whatever it was, it did not support floating point numbers, it only worked in integers, and that had a few, like, computational consequences. Probably the, uh, the main one that everybody talks about being that, uh, positions in space jittered around. P the positions of sp in space of, um, 3D geometry had a habit of jittering around and being rounded to the nearest integer. And that's actually a pretty, uh, pretty easy effect to emulate. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna create a bunch of empty lines over here, and um, I can make this full screen because I don't need any other editors right now. I'm going to be working with positions in, um, in view space. So that's going to be the result of, uh, the GM underscore matrices matrix world view multiplied by the object space position, which is just the, uh, the input position, uh, homogeneous coordinate of one. Uh, we can call this vec for I space or camera space or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to be rounding the positions of the x, y, and z coordinates of the i space coordinate uh, down. So that's going to be uh, rounded down with the floor function. And then I think I can still make the font a little bigger. Uh, the final gl underscore position is going to be matrix uh, projection multiplied by i space. So this should give us an acceptable amount of vertex jitter, and uh, exactly how much jitter that you see when you move the camera around. I'm not going to move around in space, I'm just going to uh, tilt and pan the camera, and you can see the positions of the vertices of nearby objects sort of uh, snapping to the nearest integer, as it were, in view space. And the um, how dramatic this effect is going to actually be is going to... Uh, obviously depend on the scale of your world. If you have 32 uh, units in, in Game Maker, world space equals one meter, which is the scale that I usually assume, uh, you're going to be seeing about this amount of jitter. If you, have, um, if you have a scale that is something else, so if you're assuming that one unit of Game Maker, world space equals one meter, then you're obviously going to be seeing a lot more uh, vertices jumping around on the screen, probably to a point where it's not even going to be really uh, visible what things are. So keep that in mind with what we're about to do next, and when you uh, when you decide that you really do want that sort of that sort of jittery effect in your game. So, hey, the mathematically inclined among you may uh may be aware that rounding a uh, rounding a number to the nearest whole number is not the only kind of rounding that that it's possible to do. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also round it to the nearest even number or the nearest multiple of three, or even a uh, fractional number. You could round to the nearest multiple of one point five or something like that. And if you are like me, and if you have your world scale being about um, 32 pixels of world space, 32, uh, they're not really pixels anymore, are they? Uh, corresponding to one meter, and if you want a little bit more jitter in your scene, you can instead round to um, 
the nearest, for example, multiple of two, the nearest even number. And I'm going to do that by dividing the I space X, Y, Z by two uh, inside the floor function and then multiplying it by two again. I made a video on this a while ago. And now if I, uh, if I stand in the middle of the world here and move my camera around, or if I do move back and forth in the world, then we are going to see that we have uh, objects up close are going to have a lot more jitter because their uh, their vertex positions are being snapped to the uh, snapped to a bigger grid than the one that we were snapping to when we were just uh, flooring the values. And if you wanted to um, if you wanted to round the positions to a different value, you could use some other amount. Um, you might pass this in as a uniform. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, float snap amount is going to be equal to 2.0. And I'm going to divide the I space X, Y, Z by that snap amount before flooring it. And then uh, multiplying by the, that again, uh, it won't really make a much of a visual difference, but there is also the seal uh, function, which will round a, um, round a number up to the nearest whole number instead of down. And I believe GLS will also gives us round. It does not give us round, really? Well, you can accomplish uh, like rounding to the nearest uh, whole number rather than rounding down uh, by adding 0 0.5 onto the end of this term, but flooring is good enough for us. So a, uh, an affordance that you can make for this, and I don't believe I saw anyone saying if the actual PlayStation actually did this, uh, but if you want to uh, leave one of the... Um, one of the axes alone when you do this rounding operation. Uh, for example, if you wanted to not round the Z uh, coordinate in I space when you do this, uh, this here rounding operation, you can simply just leave that part of the vector out. You can just say I space dot X, Y equals uh, floor I space dot X, Y divided by snap amount, divided by snap amount. And that will cause the, uh, the depth value to not be rounded. This is irrespective of the up vector that you use in your actual game's camera. So whether you use Z as the up vector like I do, or Y as a lot of games do, or if you use a rolling up vector like some people like to do, uh, this doesn't matter. Z is going to be the, uh, the axis pointing away from the camera once you're in view space. Uh, so you don't need to worry about X, Y, Z, which, which direction is up or anything like that. And this will... Um, this won't have too much of, of an effect, but it should prevent things from like jittering farther away from you or closer, closer to you. Um, which could potentially cause issues with like, like geometry appearing to clip through it, through other geometry from certain angles. Um, again, I don't think the actual PlayStation actually did that. If someone, um, watching this video has, has immersed themselves in PlayStation 1 graphics hardware and knows the answer to that, uh, feel free to shout in the comments, but... Hey. Uh, that's something you might want to do. Next. So the PlayStation 1 had a thing for this thing called affine texture mapping. Uh, most of the time, that is something that you really want to try to avoid. And in fact, people spend a lot of time in Game Maker trying to uh, fix, quote unquote, the draw uh, sprite position function so that it does not do this. But I suppose if you, uh, if you, if you really do want to commit to the to the PS1 look. I'll run the original demo program again so that you can see what we're doing. Um, if you see the way that some of the textures on these uh, on these squares are mapped, you can see that they do not um, they're not perspective correct as the uh, as the term goes. So if you were to subdivide, for example, the top of this box into two triangles, uh, you would see that the um, the pixels are not all mapped out to have the same amount of space. Um, as their neighbors, uh, lines do not converge towards the horizon. It's not perspective correct. And if I run the, uh, the PS1 project that we have now, uh, you can see that that's, that's not a thing. Uh, if I were to stand over this box, you could see that while they're, they are jittering around and everything, um, the, uh, the texture on top and on the sides and on, the, um, on other geometry in this game is perspective correct. Lines do converge uh, towards a point on the horizon, that sort of thing. And it drives me crazy when I see that in games, and I think uh, affine texture mapping drives a lot of people crazy when they see it in games. But again, if you want to uh, correctly commit to the uh, commit to the aesthetic, I guess I shouldn't say correctly here because this is all like being this is all an imitation. It's not really how it worked. Uh, you may be interested in 
Uh, also implementing uh, non-perspective correct texture mapping of your own. I keep making weird typos when I try to explain this part. So instead of trying to fix the typos constantly as they come up, I'm just going to uh, record this bit over again. So to uncorrect the perspective correct texture mapping that we otherwise get for free as a consequence of the way that the vertex and fragment shader variants work, uh, we are going to need to uh, to mess around with the value of v underscore v texture coordinate as it's sent to the uh, to the fragment shader and when it's sampled in the fragment shader. So first, I'm going to say v underscore v text chord uh, multiply equals so times equals uh, i space space dot z, and that is going to multiply the uh, the texture coordinate value by the um, the depth of the fragment in i space. Uh, and next, I'm also going to take the i space vector and pass that over to the uh, fragment shader as a varying. So varying vec four uh, v underscore i space position, I'm going to call it. Uh, world position and world normal are there for lighting. Uh, all the other stuff that's in the fragment shader, that's just a simple 3D lighting shader. Feel free to ignore that for now. And I'm going to say uh, v underscore v i space position is going to equal uh, i space. And we're only actually going to need the, uh, the z coordinate of the i space. So if you want to, you can only send that across to the fragment shader, but I'm just going to send the whole thing. And now, when I sample from the uh, the base texture, I'm going to sample from position v underscore v text chord divided by v underscore i space position dot z. And that is going to cause our affine texture mapping insanity to come back. Uh, we can see now that we have, um, and I, I think it'll, uh, it'll actually get worse if you look at it from like a, a sharper angle like this than it would if you just looked at it head on. Uh, this will cause the affine texture mapping to uh, distort the texture on top of this box. You can see it happening on the sides of this box over here. Uh, on the front-facing side, the, the one that's facing us at a more head-on angle, it's, uh, it's pretty ordinary, but the closer we get, the weirder it gets. And um, that's uh, not really a look that I especially like, but it is apparently a, a part of the aesthetic of the PS1, the PS1 look that people... Uh, really seem to like. So if you want that, you can include it in your shader. Uh, if you don't want that, you can just not include it. You can comment it out. You can um, have a, I don't know, another uniform that will allow you to enable or disable that effect if you want. But affine textures. I'm going to make this, I'm going to make that its own, uh, its own variable. All right, so anything else? You can do other stuff on top of this effect. Uh, you can, as you can see, I'm doing right now, you can do 3D lighting effects on top of this. You can mix this in with other effects that aren't just like a PS1 look. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole of how the PS1 worked, I'm sure there's more that you could do. I'm sure that there's more things that you could do in the fragment shader to uh, more accurately represent the integer positions or uh, other such things, but I'm going to call it here for now. So, uh, if you want the code for this, uh, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. There's honestly not much that I added. Uh, just a couple lines of GLS all over here on the Vertex and the Fragment Shader. Uh, so there's that. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently Bullet Hell. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. And of course, there was one thing I forgot. So, uh, possibly the most uh, PS1-like effect of all that you could do is... Every time I close Game Maker, it doesn't save the font size. It's kind of annoying. Um, the, uh, the screen size. So uh, PlayStation 1 games seem to render mostly at somewhere between 640 by uh, 640 by 480 standard definition, and it could go all the way down to 256 by 144, according to the minute or so of research that I did on the old Google. And uh, if you were to manually uh, take over drawing of the application surface, and if you were to manually surface resize uh, the application surface to uh, one of those resolutions, let's go with 640 by 360 is uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so we'll go with that instead. And if you were to simply go into the draw 
post draw event and draw the application surface yourself. Uh, that's going to be surface draw. No, I was right the first time. Been using this for how long and I still don't know which it is. Uh, the application surface zero zero, and we can scale that up. Draw surface stretch. Scale that up to window get width. Window get height. Uh, this is going to give us a rather blocky pixelated look uh, to our game, and this will also contribute to the PS1 aesthetic. This is not a shader trick. Uh, this is just reminding everybody of the uh, limited resolution of that. Um, what was it? Fifth generation of video game consoles. And if you wanted to go all the way down to, uh, what did I say? Uh, 256 by 144. Uh, then we are going to have an extremely blocky mess. And uh, the only reason you would do this if you it was if you really, really were committed to the uh, to the jitter aesthetic. At this point, the uh, the blockiness of the screen almost overpowers the vertex jitter effect, and it almost makes that not very noticeable because each of the pixels on this application surface are like the size of my face. Um, but yeah, that is an artistic choice. That is up to you whether or not you want to go that far. Uh, I'm going to end this off for real. My name is Michael, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.